Good evening, sports fans. You are listening to a TV Party Tonight Extra alternative boxing commentary. We've got the Premier Boxing Championships on Fox. Heavyweight action coming your way. Chris Adam Kanowski versus Chris Ariola, And, of course, I'm your stumbling, bumbling host, Mr. Mark Radledge, your mandated reporter, and, frankly, I'm mortified. And tonight, we have a new person on the analysis desk. Uh, Pat Mullen is at home drinking beer and watching pro wrestling. Something about an Okada and a Sonata and a Huziwatsi and a G1 and I don't know what's going on over there. But he couldn't be with us this evening. So instead, I put the call out and this man answered the call from the All About Life podcast. We have uh, boxing enthusiast Victor Kirkado. How you doing, Victor? I'm doing great. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I'm excited about this. I'm hoping we'll get to do more in the future. Uh, tell us real quick uh, about your history with boxing, Victor. How long have you been watching it for? Uh, who do you like? Who do you like to follow? Uh, actually, I've been watching boxing since 1995, and I really got into it with the whole Tyson era. Um, the the guy, you know, and I've always liked the heavyweight division, um, you know, being, you know, a fan from boxing and um, Evander Holyfield. Um, but recently, actually, I've been really following um, and interested with uh, Manny Pacquiao and his career and how that thing is just taking so many different turns and him coming back. I mean, it's just it's been a wild ride with uh, Mr. Pacquiao there. It has. We actually called his last fight against Thurman. And uh, it was an interesting one, to say the least. Uh, for myself, I actually started seriously following boxing um, probably going back to 2011. And I've kind of, I, I would follow it for a while, and then I would kind of go away for a little bit. And then Deontay Wilder knocked somebody out in Alabama on Showtime, and I was in love. Love! <laughs> and I don't care how good or bad anyone thinks Deontay Wilder is. I am a fan of all things Deontay Wilder. Um, no, but I mean, he's a great boxer. No one can take that away from him. He he, um, I, he does introduce me so I can refute your points. <laughs> All, right. All right. Before I do that, uh, real quick, Victor, uh, just tell yeah. people a little bit about your podcast that you do and where they can find it. Sure. Actually, you can find me uh, my podcast and anywhere, any platform that you listen to uh, podcast in, uh, whether it's the uh, Anchor, um, I'm on Spotify. Uh, it just got added to iHeartRadio, which I'm really excited about. Um, and all about life is about bringing encouragement, inspiration, and motivation to all my listeners to inspire people to go out there and follow their dreams and follow their purpose and. Not to allow anything hold them, uh, to hold them that back because life is just too short and, and life is real. You know, and we need to take life seriously and just go after it before time runs out, man, because, you know, time's the ultimate fighter. Time beats everybody. It's nice to have a little positivity on the Rattledge and Broadcasting Network because here comes the darkness, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I from, love it. from 411mania.com, fresh off his coverage of UFC Fight Night Covington, a.k.a. I Heart Trump, uh, a.k.a. Kurt Angle's new favorite <laughs> MMA fighter versus Robbie Lawler. Ladies and gentlemen, Robert Winfrey, how do you do, sir? I'm doing all right, um, apart from having to look at Deontay Wilder's getup because, boy, the you know 1700s <laughs> called him. They want their ruffles back. <laughs> yeah, he's, oh, he's, he went there. <laughs> he's, he's, looking, uh, he's looking a bit... Um, renaissance there what can, what can one say how was your ufc coverage this evening uh, i watched it myself but i want to get your thoughts since you covered it from soup to nuts what'd you think of the event it wasn't a good event okay uh i mean let's there was some decent stuff there uh let me see i mean matt schnell had a really if we're talking prelims matt schnell had a really good uh, submission win. He has a really slick uh, guillotine to triangle choke transition that I need to study because it's so good. Um, eh, Shevchenko and Pudilova wasn't bad. Uh, the main card started rough with Kennedy. They pronounced his name differently, and I forgot. It's not quite in my head. Uh, I think they went with Nezchukwu instead of Nchukwo, but I don't know. I'll 
re-listen to it again. Uh, him and Darko Stasic had a stinker. Scott Holtzman and Dong Yun Ma was, eh, it was all right for a two-round fight. And points of insanity, but it's a Ma fight. Speaking of fights stopped because an eye was closed. Yeah, yeah, his, his left eye was swollen shut. Yeah, we'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, Mershart and Giles was, eh. Yeah, Meerkat, uh, Meerkat won his fight. I mean, nice finishing sequence, but other than that, a lot of men. Nazrat Hakparas continues the rampage of Mini Gastelum. Uh, and that wasn't awful, but was utterly forgettable. Uh, Jim Miller, boy howdy. Uh, how do you not love Jim Miller? Chokes out Clay Guida less than a minute into the first round. That was great. Clay Guida needs to go home. Someone give him a kerchief, give him a stick, send him on his way. Uh, look, Clay Guida's needed to go away since I've been watching the sport. <laughs> uh, yeah, Colby Co- know, then Covington he was one of my lawler. favorites, too. I once saw Clay Guida fight uh, Gray Maynard. Time stood still. I looked into the middle distance, and there was nothing. And everyone watching around me was like, why do you even watch this stuff? Now, granted, it was with people who don't watch MMA, but still, worst fight ever. Look, that fight actually got a lot of people to realize what I had known for quite some time, that Clay Guida's not all that good. He got a reputation for exciting fights when he was distinctly overmatched as a competitor and just bounced around a lot and got punched in the face repeatedly. <laughs> Anytime he actually won a fight, they tended to suck. Well, Jim Miller choked him out, and then we had our five-round um, <laughs> Covington versus Lawler. Interesting fight. That was five rounds of Covington either tackling Robbie Lawler or punching him dead in the face. Yeah, I saw Jimmy Smith put this on Twitter after the first round, and it was very, very prophetic. When Robbie Lawler gets taken down consistently, even when he's getting back up, that tends not to go well for him. It tends to be bad. Yeah. When Robbie Lawler gets outboxed at middle distance, he can't win. <laughs> um, all right, so... We, uh, we are just about ready for our main event, and here's what we've got so far. Uh, Gene Pascal just dethroned the previous unbeaten WBA interim light heavyweight champion, Sir Marcus Brown. Ooh. It was stopped in the eighth round due to an accidental headbutt where it looked like poor Marcus Brown's eye was about to fall out of his head. Victor, what did you think of the fight? My, it was a great fight until then. I mean, I had it, to tell you the truth, I had was scoring it with the rounds, and I had it tied. Um, I, to me, it was very exciting. It was very evenly matched. Uh, of course, you know, I'm 38 years old, so I was <laughs> rooting for the older guy. Um, but, you know, it, it was a good fight. I was really disappointed of how it ended with just that gnarly uh, accidental headbutt. Uh, man, that eye just started gushing right away. You know, I had a feeling after that it, they were going to have to stop it because there's no way you'll be able to, you know, even stop that blood from going because it's soft tissue. Um, so I was I was kind of disappointed it ended that way, but I had it a tie at the end of the uh, eighth round. Um, that was a great but, fight for television. Though at points there, it looked like both of them had been had gotten their master's degree from the Mr. T School of Boxing. Holy <laughs> cow! Those were some wild hooks. At one point early in the fight, Pascal threw a hook, and I fell off my couch. Poor Joey Janela landed on his head, and they scored the and they scored the round for Canelo. It was all of the things. That sounds about right. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um. Earlier in the evening, a junior middleweight whale, lucky boy, I'm going to pronounce this wrong, Amatoso scored a third-round TKO over former middleweight title challenger Curtis the Cerebral Assassin Stevens. That uh, was not a competitive fight. Well, he oh, knocked but... him from pillar to post. I haven't seen the guy fall down that much. <laughs> Jesus yeah. Christ. Since the last Joey Janela match? That's the one. I was. You know what? I was afraid to hit that joke twice in a row, but thank you. Thank you for doing <laughs> much this like for Joe. Look, no one's afraid to hit Joey Janela too many times. Keep this, doing it. This is true. Um, Robert, I'm going to throw it to you. That that first one you said was not competitive. Uh, not even close. Give me a little more. Uh, Spencer had been off for, I think, a period of a couple of years at that, nearly two years at that point. I think they said over 30 months. Uh, and that kind of ring rust is a real thing. Add to that that he was going down in weight for the first time, and he looked shredded, and I think he technically had a reach advantage, but he was at a significant height disadvantage. And any time he would 
get close and try to just really unload. I think during the third round, he unleashed a flurry, but none of it really got through the defense of Omatose. And then he just kept leaving openings, and Omatose was not afraid to either do full-on pitch and catch and just wait for him to be done and then counter him or just punch with him and just get to the target faster and drop him. I mean, he dropped him in every round. Uh, there was only a three-round fight. It only went three rounds. Excuse me, it's not the fourth, but it would have been the third. It was the round that, he, that when the fight was stopped. He just came out and went, uh, Spencer came out and just threw caution to the wind, threw massive, a massive flurry along the ropes, but none of it really landed. And then Omatose just clobbered him with another right, dropped him, and the ref decided, you know what? I don't think we need to see you take any more brain damage this evening, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're done. Sit down, sir. Uh, earlier in the day on ESPN Plus, uh, we had Conlon versus Ruiz. WBO, B, WBA, and IBF featherweight Michael Conlon scored a ninth round TKO over Diego Alberto El Profeta Ruiz. Uh, over in Belfast, did you have a chance to, to watch this fight, Victor? I did not, actually. I missed that one. Robert, did you catch any of the Conlon fight? I caught the first couple of rounds and immediately realized what was going to happen and decided to spare myself. Fantastic. Okay, Moving so on. I didn't miss anything. <laughs> <laughs> watch watch any, any like two-round stretch of that fight. The whole fight looks like that. His corner should have stopped it earlier because there was no point in continuing, but hey, let's let him get a few more rounds of getting hit repeatedly. For and no, fine, he has no chance of winning. And finally, uh, uh, Friday night, Friday afternoon over on DAZN in good old Liverpool, middleweight Anthony Fowler returned with a wide points win over Brian Rose on um, over there, with scores of 98-92, 98-92, and 97-93. So if you have DAZN and you weren't working like I wasn't, <laughs> you watched a fairly entertaining fight. It was, it was fine. All right, Victor, uh, let's talk about our main event here Uh Kanowski versus Ariola. How do you see this fight going? Who do you like? What's the strategy here for the favorite, Chris, uh, Adam Aronowski? Jesus Christ. Adam Kanowski. <laughs> <laughs> Your well, Polish for... is uh, showing, Mark. Which is to say, you don't have any. <laughs> I, uh, I don't take notes, people. It's all off the cuff. <laughs> yeah, hopefully my Puerto Rican don't start showing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I have it, you know, I'm going for Adam Kanowski. I did watch uh, some of his fights. Um, you know, he's coming, he's undefeated. He's 19-0. and 0. Uh, He's coming off a TKO win on the second round against uh, Gerald Washington. Um, his, man, you know, the one thing I love about Adam is his left hook and the fact that he does play on the body he does wear his opponents down so um his left hook is going to be key in this particular fight and that left hook uh to the body um which works so well especially when he sets it up with that jab i mean he comes in with that jab to the head a uh, few times get the gets the opponent to put their hands up and then boom left hook right to the body they never see it coming it's so quick um, with Ariola, he's going to have to be careful and make sure that he um, stops that left hook from Adam. Um, and if you notice as well, the, the tricky part with stopping that left hook is always paying attention of his overhand right. This man has a great overhand right after he throws that left hook, comes right just slightly above even if you throw a jab to counter he comes right slightly above uh the right i'm sorry with his overhand right and just i mean nails it every single time um so uh, while defending that left hook he's gonna have to be careful with um you know kanowski following that up with that right overhand right uh they just seem he seems to land it every single time uh and right on the body he's very accurate with it um, so, you know, we'll see if uh, this game plan for Adam works on Ariola and if uh, he doesn't, you know, wear him out and that body. And I see it. I only see this fight going three rounds. Um, and I'm I'm probably I'm calling two minute uh, mark on the third round. Uh, and I have it for Kanowski via TKO. Let's flip to the other side here. This has been a year of uh, some pretty significant. um Underdog uh, come from behind wins. I mean, Aunt, uh, Ruiz Jr. ended up beating Anthony Joshua. Nobody saw that coming. Joshua was supposed oh, to. That's true. 
<laughs> no, nobody was. No, he was supposed to walk through that guy, and he ended up uh, walking off into the woods to live deliberately. We don't know what happened, to Anthony. Oh, Jones. He went into rehab. Let's not kid ourselves <laughs> about this. <laughs> so, what does Chris Ariola uh, have to do to continue this streak? What does he have to do to turn this around for himself, Robert? Oh, I mean, I hate to say get lucky. <laughs> There's a couple of things about this that really do kind of work in his – that can be made to work in his favor. If he fights long, he might have a shot because uh, Konofsky's big advantage over most of the heavyweight division right now is he's developed over the last couple of years into a very slick infighter. He might be the best – he's probably the best infighter in the heavyweight division right now, which is – bear in mind being a little bit like the world's tallest midget – it's not a very hard, not a very you know tall hurdle to clear, but it is still something to use to your advantage. And he's going to be looking to exploit that, especially against Ariola, who's not a very technical fighter, and who's probably going to let him close the distance. I think Ariola might be really trying to force a straight up brawl here, because if he can get Konofsky into not again, into not being technical on the inside, into not trying to hit and move, into not beating up his body and then exiting on an angle. He might be able to catch him with something, but Ariola's never been a great fighter. He's been a good fighter for po- intermittent periods of his career, but he tends to get trotted out into positions like this to make somebody else look good. And Konofsky's been making noise for a while now about wanting to fight Deontay Wilder. And given how he's developed his skills, again, the, the infighting in particular, that's not as crazy a proposition as it used to be. Um, okay. Who do you – I'm going to throw it back mm-hmm. to you, Victor. Uh, he talked about, as Robert said, wanting to fight Deontay Wilder. Is that who you – if he wins this fight, and, you know, the money says that he does, uh, is yeah. that who you see next for – uh, Deontay Wilder, do you see somebody else maybe? Because I think Deontay Wilder wants uh, a different fight, and I think Tyson Fury just signed with somebody else, so the heavyweight division's a bit of a mess. Uh, but Boxing's yeah. a bit of a mess. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. That, that's why they've lost so many fans over the last uh, you know few years. Um, I mean, they almost lost me, too, when they started uh, just doing horrible calls. And, um, yeah, that's you know, where our joke about that about we score rounds for Canelo came from. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean, it, it was just uh, – it was crazy how, how just ridiculously obvious it got. Um, you know, but, hey, I, I, I stuck with it. Um, but – yeah, I mean it's uh, you know that you're absolutely right about the heavyweight. They need to bring some sort of um, substance and some sort of order to the division, and it's a great division. I would love, I mean, I would love for the spotlight to come back on the heavyweight because, I mean, I remember even growing up, the heavyweight was where it was at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. Robert knows I have a fetish for heavyweights, no matter what sport it is. Um, yeah, <laughs> you have inflicted that upon me a couple of times. <laughs> But you know, I look, in a positive way. I uh, look, when Andy Ruiz got the title from uh, Anthony Joshua, I called like th- they need to make Deontay Wilder versus Ruiz Jr. in Dallas, like right at Cowboy Stadium. I know that it's called something else now. I think it's AT and T Stadium, but they you know, they need to do that fight in Texas like today. Uh, and then I think both of them ended up deciding they wanted to fight somebody else. So who the hell knows? Well, hang on. Anthony Joshua has his immediate rematch clause. And uh-huh. in fairness, and hang on, and if, and if you're Ruiz Jr., if you can at all get that fight to not take place in the UK, do it. There is some shady stuff going on. <laughs> With the, not a joke. Like there was an event last week, and one of the boxers, oh Dylan White, yeah, that yeah, he, was uh, he won his fight and immediately pop positive, and it was like, what did you sign with the UFC or something? What's going hold on, on here? Hold on, not only did he pop positive, <laughs> the uh, not only did he fail the drug test, the commission wait, knew gotta, he'd got, already failed the test. Wait, I got another one. I got another one. What are you working out? <clears throat> what are you working out with John Jones these days? Eh? Eh, I, got, <laughs> I got a million of them. Go ahead, That's Robert. really not the most. Look, you should come on. Chael Sonnen reference is right there. <laughs> oh, yes, wow. yes, yeah. Well, that's why he left and we had to go to another promotion. <laughs> yeah, he's in Bellator now, so who who knows what's what's going uh, on with Chael Sonnen? He re- he retired officially. <laughs> Okay. Um, anyway, so not only did he fail his drug test, 
Um, not only did the commission know he failed his drug test pre- you know, prior to the fight, they did not inform his opponent. Wait, that was prior to the fight? That I, That's a detail that escaped yes. me. I thought it was afterwards that they found no, out. No, they released the information after the fight. Oh, Jesus Christ. They <laughs> knew about it. Uh, yep. They did not allow his corner to check White's wrappings or to be present for that or to check his gloves. Uh, they complained... Uh, Again, there's a lot of shady crap that went on with that situation. Again, if I'm Anthony Ruiz Jr., I do whatever I can to make sure that rematch does not take place in England. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be the smart money. All right, as we, going on. as we uh, see the walkouts finally taking place, we're almost underway here. I want to go over the schedule real quick. Uh, coming up next weekend, Pat Mullen returns to the analysis desk. Uh, I think you're busy, aren't you, Robert? You've got, you've got Shevchenko's fight. I don't know when it starts, when the um, but I assume I mean it's in Uruguay, so given the relative time, it's probably going to be set loosely on East Coast time, so I probably will not be free. All right, so it'll be just myself and Pat. Frampton comes alive, baby dolls. Call Frampton versus Emmanuel Dominguez will be on I believe ESPN Plus, coming right at you from Filthy Delphia. Uh, we'll do coverage for that. Uh, on DAZN, sometime around the same time, we've got Antonio Orozco versus Virgil Ortiz Jr. Um, August 17th, uh, we will be doing my Robert's going to try to do coverage for 411 and do a watch along podcast with me for Steepy Myochik versus Dan Cormier, too. Uh, Probably going to go badly, but tune in for the car wreck. Yes, yes. Please tune in for the shit show. It'll be fantastic. Um, and we'll never do it again. Uh, I don't know. We might be surprised. No, no, no. Us trying to do cover, uh, him trying to do written coverage and watch it and talk to me at the same time. That's what we think is going to go badly. I'm sure. Oh. I'm sure. I'm sure the card will be just fine. Um. Wait. Wait. Cormier Miocic too. Yeah. Uh. I don't know, man. I, I'm still waiting on Pettis to pull out of that fight because Anthony Pettis. <laughs> yeah. Or D. Or um. One no, of the no. Diaz Look, brothers when- to get himself arrested. It would take yeah. something like that, but when Nate signs on the dotted line, he tends to show up. Romero and Costa's yeah. all right. That's not a very strong Soldier card, of God. I, that was reason enough for me to buy the pay-per-view other than boom heavyweights. Love me some Yol Romero. Romero is awesome. <laughs> he is. He is. Um, Benitez and Sadiq Yusuf, and eh, they're pushing Yusuf pretty hard. Brunson and Heinish, now nah, Brunson sucks. Uh, Drakkar Close and Christos Yagos, that's a gimme for Close. Rafael Asensau and Corey Sandhagen's actually a really good fight. Uh, Sandhagen's ascension likely to continue, but that's a stiff test. Pollyanna Botella's opponent fell out, but it's women's flyweight, so who cares? <laughs> Manny Bermudez and Casey Kenny's a nothing fight. Devontae Smith doesn't have an opponent anymore. Oh, Mr. Perfect! Young Ho Kong is fighting Brandon Davis. That's a pretty easy fight for Kong, actually. Fantastic. Uh, August 17th, we've got over on Showtime, if you're not into watching the MMA, we've got Ivana... Uh... Habazine versus Clarissa Shields. And over on ESPN, we've got Emmanuel Navarrete versus Francisco de Vaca. Um, Saturday, August 24th. I want to try to get one of these covered. We'll talk about it later. We've got Brandon Figueroa versus Javier Nicolas Chacon. That's the big one over on Fox Sports 1 is what they're telling me. Uh, Jonathan Gonzalez versus Kosei Tanaka uh, over in Japan. Over on DAZN. We've got Juan Francisco Estrada versus Dwayne Beeman. Uh, I don't have a time for that one, but it's somewhere in Mexico. Uh, and the 31st, there's like shit tons of wrestling on, but if you're not into it, we've got Peter Quillen versus Caleb Trow uh, over on Fox. He'll be right back here on Fox, just like we're doing now. Uh, Vasil Lomachenko versus Luke Campbell over on ESPN+. Plus. Uh, Lomachenko, best boxer in the world. Yeah, I would have loved to have covered that one, but I'll be like right in the middle of yet another English card, uh, NXT Cardiff. Uh, That's actually a tough call. That Cardiff card is pretty sweet. I mean, anytime you get to see Walter just slap the crap out of somebody's a good time. That's why we're doing it. Um, (laughs) And we'll have to uh, figure this out. I don't know what's going on September 28th. Besides this, I don't have my calendar up. But uh, Sean Perter versus Errol Spence Jr., if we don't have wrestling obligations or I'm not being dragged to something by my wife, then we will cover that for you. Uh, could, be, could be Mr. Victor, could be Robert, could be Pat. You don't know. It'll be a surprise. It's a pinata of people i got to work with. 
By which the, by which he means he likes to hit us with sticks. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, being the positive guy that I am, uh, I'll take on some masochism. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, folks, I think we are about to get underway here. Are uh, they doing the national anthems? I don't know. I have it on mute. Yeah, they are. Uh, can we do away with this tradition, please? <laughs> <laughs> I just wait. Why don't kill- you like those? Tra- okay, what, why don't you like those traditions? I'm, now I'm curious. <sighs> Look, if we're dealing if we're dealing with something where your nationality matters, if you're at if you we're talking about you know a World Cup in soccer or you know the Olympic Games or anything like that, then fine, I get it. It goes along with it. I'm just not the biggest fan of grinding the broadcast and everything to a halt for ten minutes plus a commercial break while we play national anthems and. Which also some of which depends on the country you're from. I mean, the Argentinian national anthem goes on for like four minutes. Yeah, <laughs> I'll tell you my I'll tell you my issue with it. Um, and I'm not a professional television producer or anything, but you know, Fox is doing boxing and pro wrestling. You know, I think it's what October, November, September, somewhere in there. Uh, SmackDown comes to Fox, and they're doing it because it's hard to get eyeballs on commercial television right now. So, you mm-hmm. know, what gets commercial what what gets eyeballs is live sports and an easy one to produce and one that usually gets eyeballs is combat sports uh these days. You know, that's something they didn't have before. Uh up until recently. You know, like obviously years ago they did, but it went away for a while and now it's back, which I'm happy about. And it, but in any case, this is the sort of thing that loses people. <laughs> like this is a 2-hour broadcast. It's 5 minutes to 10 for fuck's sake. <laughs> we're still not, yeah. we still haven't started the main event yet. People go to my wife went to bed an hour ago. <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh, that's you know. true too. And then there's also the the uh, bathroom factor that sometimes you know when you're when all this stuff is going on and and I've missed uh, you know fights that just go quickly, um, aka you know like um, McGregor um, and Aldo for example. Um, and they were doing the whole, you know, shebang. I'm like, you know, let me go to the restroom and just, you know, I'll be, I'll be quick. I'll come back and fight's over. I'm like, what the, what, yeah. what? Um, There's so, been a few of those you know, where you blinked, you missed it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But, I mean, you get, you know, you're trying to just get pumped up and pumped up. And, and you, you know, you're pumped up to the whole card. So then they drag everything out. Oh, let me go use the restroom and come back. And then, boom, the fight's done. You're like, like what the heck? This isn't bad. This, will, I mean, depending on how soon uh, they finish the fight, this will be over sometime, you know, before eleven. Yeah. The MMA cards oh, yeah. when they dra- or the boxing pop pay per views when they drag those out, you know, because uh-huh. they're going on West Coast time and they end sometime around one o'clock in the morning. Ugh, <laughs> I yeah. got, I'm on energy drinks and and, and <laughs> running around my house. I'm like waking my kids up. I'm like oh, I got to stay awake. You're lucky it's only one in the morning sometimes on the East Coast. And then, you know, you stay talking with your buddy, especially if you go and see it with somebody. You you stay talking, and, you know, I like to watch the post fights. So, I mean, I don't go to bed. When it happens, I don't – I mean, sometimes I don't even sleep. I'm just like, hey, whatever. I'll just stay up for the rest of the night. <laughs> when I was um, when I was doing some degree of coverage for 401 Mania – I used to stay up and watch the post-fight press conference so that I could get... Or When I was doing the podcast, I would watch the post-fight press conference. And my God, staying up to watch that on YouTube or whatever. Ugh. It was so <laughs> badly done, too. It was like, hey, we got to wait for everybody to get here. And nobody can talk. And Now they just do it one at a time. They send out one guy at a time. And it, it's a little bit more streamlined. Plus, they also start it before the main event actually ends. So some of the guys earlier in the evening can... Get a little bit of time with some of the journalists. Well, that's good because I used to feel bad for some of them. Like if you were in like the first fight of the main card and nobody asked you any questions, you just sit up there like an asshole. <laughs> like, <laughs> 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 Hi, I'm Joanna. Jo- uh, jo- Joanna Champion. Does anyone want to ask me a question? No. All right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they look so awkward too. Uh, Anytime they do those big, like you know, hey, there's. Eight guys on this side and eight guys on the other, and you can tell there's at least two of them on either side of the stage that are giving each other side eye. Like, you know, you and I are probably going to do this next, so I'm going to take this opportunity to trash you. And then we get yeah. bad MMA trash talk for ten minutes. 
Uh huh. <laughs> All right, I think we are ready to get underway here. They've just received yes. referee instructions from what? Uh, was it Danny Schiavone? <laughs> um, oh, hey, Mark. Yes, sir. By the way, I didn't. I don't think I answered your question earlier. Um, I would like if uh, Kanowski wins tonight. I would like that Wilder uh, fight. You know, Wilder and, and Kanowski. I think that would be uh, interesting fight, and and I think it would, uh, you know, it piqued my my interest. So. Just wanted to answer that real quick. All right. Well, let's see what happens here as we begin round one as they square off. Uh, they started to take center ring. Kanowski. Oh, Jesus Christ. Just, wow. Just... He's a minus 2,000 <laughs> favorite. Kanowski started yeah. to walk him back into the corner and immediately started throwing lefts and rights. He's uh, pressuring him He's against the road. He's going to the head. Yeah, he seems to, he, he seems to be headhunting and wanting to end this early. Uh, there's that body work you were talking about now as they take to the other side of the ring. But, yeah, Ariola keeps rest, – keeps, uh, he's keeping him against the ropes. A little bit of paddling the canoe there from Ariola. His punching technique is not great in close quarters. No, not at all. I'm liking the defense from Kanowski so far. You know, he's not just dropping his hands and swinging wildly. He's protecting his head and protecting his body. Ariola's fights. Ariola's boxing shoes look like looks like he has those like blue Adidas with socks on. That I don't know who made that decision, but it's not a good look. <laughs> He's got like the sandals and socks look. So Kanowski just landed one oh. to the head there, and uh, Ariola made a face at him. Yeah, which is just okay. They, they're giving Ariola credit for landing punches. He's not actually landing really. Yeah. Here. <laughs> hey, the the punches landed are about even. Ooh, they are not. Yeah, there's a real... Ariola did, I think Ariola did a little bit of his homework because he's actually protecting, um, you know, that side from uh, the left hook there. He's, he's actually keeping that elbow low, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's... I mean, but that might be what's informing Kanoski's uh, ch change of you know, strategy is that he is that Ariola's protecting his body, and so he's, you know, he, leaving himself open and up top. He's more trying to sneak in those body shots now when they're exiting the pocket instead of really just teeing off while they're in infighting position. Anytime they're in motion, he tries to sneak that one as Ariola is trying to circle away. If Kanoski fights Andy Ruiz Jr., do you think it'll be sponsored by Weight Watchers? <laughs> no. <laughs> that, that's a shot at both of those guys' bodies everywhere, and I'm body shaming. It, it, well, it, the funny part is the uh, um, Kanowski actually went out defending heavier guys uh, because he was getting criticized over his body and he's saying, hey, us chubby guys can fight too. They certainly can, by golly. <laughs> yeah, he's oh, really starting go. to get that left hook to the body going now. And uh -huh. Ariola's, Ariola's getting a little bit more active because he... I think he can sense that that's going to be a problem for him. So if he's going to change the tenor of the fight, he has to do it quickly. So there was some brawling yeah. in the corner there. There were some good uh, hook exchanges between the two fighters. Ariola is kind of standing up to Kanowski. Oof. He could, that he, one was good. Yeah, he could. No, he got a straight there right as the round ended. Um, all right. I think that's a pretty pretty safe 10-9 for Kanowski. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And curse my broadcast here because I am about 10 seconds behind you guys because no one cares if Utah gets broadcast time at the same time as everyone else. <laughs> really? We're, we're on terrestrial television and you still can't keep up with uh, the same uh, time as me? Eh, it happened. Uh, well, I'm also watching it on my computer, so there might oh, okay. be a bit of a... That's probably where the, that's probably legally, where the coming from. But yeah, there's still a bit of a delay there that's a bit annoying, but... So my apologies if I react on occasion to things that have already happened. I will try to censor myself as far as that goes. Let's see. <laughs> also, <laughs> also we've had some pretty, again, we've had some pretty serious thunderstorms here off and on all day. So there might be some of that that's affecting things. All right. So this kid that's in the Geico commercial, and, and I have to talk <laughs> about this. <laughs> If they're playing commercials, we're going to talk about them. <laughs> Boy, does he get a lot of work now? It's the same. It's the same acting. It's the same character, but he gets a lot of work. All right, we're back into it as they show some highlights from the previous round, and they are right back to brawling. Yeah, they, they, keeps getting back into the ropes. 
Ariola's footwork isn't great to begin with, and he just doesn't really know how to circle an angle away from the pressure of Konoski as he's coming forward. And neither of these guys are built for, you know, the full 12 rounds, so you may as well get after it fast. And I would say Konoski does have a better stamina than Ariola does. So in the later rounds, I mean... I might have better goes... stamina than Ariola does. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I have, well, uh, yeah, I have... he needs to he needs to get on his uh, on his fitness there a little bit. But you know he's also thirty eight years old, so you know. In yeah, fight... Respect for the old guy getting after it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, and I'm thirty eight too, so you know I'm talking from uh, from from that perspective and my perspective. <laughs> Yeah, you can see Ariola trying to make this a brawl, but he's not getting uh, Konoski mm-hmm. to abandon the proper infighting technique, and that's really what's kind of being his undoing so far. Because Ariola's again abandoning elements of proper defense, what proper cl- hand position. What a clubbing right that, that was from against. Konoski. I mean, mm-hmm. none of these are really hitting the button and knocking Ariola's face in, but he's taking some hard shots now, and uh, Konoski mm-hmm. has definitely been laying in some. Pretty impressive uh, hooks and right and uh, and straight rights. He's got the old uh, Polish clubbing power, and I don't just mean that as you know all Polish people have that, but you know, there's there's thudding power and there's stopping power and you know, all different you know, termin- different bits of terminology. He's also Can hitting I... him with the full front of the glove, as opposed to like the Deontay Wilder shote, as Pat would call it. <laughs> Great googly moogly. <laughs> Which I'm sure has made its way into commentary at some point. <laughs> Deontay Man, Wilder, what do you think of this fight? Yeah. God zoops. Um, uh, I was about to. I, I was trying to. I was going to set up a bit earlier where I'd say we were patched into Deontay Wilder's feet, and then occasionally just ask for Wilder's comment and have you just go well, great googly moogly, and we just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Victor, you wanted to break in with some actual boxing analysis other than our standard comedy on Deontay Wilder. No, I mean, <laughs> the you know the the guy you know the guy's on point. Um, you know, I really I really like what he's doing. Um, his his jab, you know how he sets everything up. You know with his jab, um, you know, and that's that's my favorite punch personally as well. So whenever somebody you know takes up for it and and actually sets things up for it, I'm always a fan. Yeah, you know, if Ariola had any sort of power in his right hand in close, he'd have done some damage by now because Kanoski oh, yeah. just started leaving his left, basically at his hip because he's not afraid of that counterpunch. Well, I was gonna say neither guy's footwork is particularly impressive. I mean, when you talk about boxing in terms mm-hmm. of not letting the other guy hit you, you know, the May- the Mayweather special, neither one of them are doing that. They are literally standing in the pocket. And yes, they're using some degree of defense. You're seeing punches land on the forearms and such. Um, but I there's mean, a lot of it's... rolling with punches going on too. But right. it, yeah. they're they're not really you know avoiding offense in the traditional sense of the word. No, it's a, uh, it's it's a good television fight. The guys are leaning in and punching each other in the head and body. But in term in terms of traditional boxing goes, yikes! You know, Mark, well, you asked a while ago. I think when we covered. Uh, Tyson Fury's last fight, why people think Tyson Fury's the best heavyweight in the world. Do I have to show you the rest of the division for you to understand why people fe- <laughs> feel that way? Yes, no, I, un- I understand that uh, for, a, for a heavyweight, that man's got dancing feet. He looks like... In, like in he fairness, just... for at least two divisions lower than him, he's uh, he's no, got really good comparatively mobility. Comparatively speaking, Tyson Fury looks like he just got off the set of the Thriller video. That's an old reference, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. I'm a little bit embarrassed for you. <laughs> hey, is it uh, awkward that I'm moonwalking over here? No, not at all, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and we are back. We are in round three of 12 of this heavyweight main event here on the Fox Terrestrial Broadcast. As we see Kanowski, uh leading with his left jab. Here we go. You know what I think it's going on too in there is I think both of their emotions are running up really high because, I, oh man, I, there's the round I called too. By the way, there's the round I called. TKO Kodowski. That, that was a nice but, uh, that led that that, yeah. that led that flurry off. But Ariola said after this, if he doesn't win, he's retiring and he's he's going home and he's staying home. And Kanowski, this is you know have. Um, it could definitely elevate him to the top of this division. So they're both, you know, they're both hungry for different reason. 
And so I think there's a lot of emotions going on as well. And that's why that's where a lot of the brawling, I believe, is, is coming from a lot of the, you know, the the standing and brawling instead of sticking to just conventional tactical boxing. I like the I, use of the uppercut that. between these two because they're both doing it. They're both kind of lean, you know, leaning, yep. hunched over. They're not fighting tall, and they're both utilizing the uppercut as a good weapon. I don't know how much power either one of them are putting behind it, but boy, are they using it pretty effectively. Uh, if you look at their feet, the answer is not very much power. Yeah. There's a lot of you know, kind of just bringing it from the shoulder instead of kind of digging yep. and springing or turning your hip into it. Yeah, they both kind of, they're both kind of boxing like when I do drills with my five-year-old. Yes. <laughs> yeah, they're flat-footed too, man. Look at, the, look at those feet, man, flat. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think you... you know, I think they're very aware that this is a television fight, and Kanofsky is trying to get a shot at Deontay Wilder, and if he's going to do that, I think he does need a degree of larger fan support, because most people don't even know who he is. So right. he's trying to, I think, yeah, I agree with you, in addition to you know, the emotions running high, I think he's making a somewhat tactical decision to fight a little bit more fan-friendly so that there will be a bit of you know people wanting to actually see the fight instead of just the... Uh, the standard, you know, machine turning over and it being his turn. Okay, we're gonna That's throw a great point. We're gonna throw it out to my wife who has entered the room. Hey, who's winning on Sex in the City too? <laughs> no one. <laughs> no, I'm making a joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so so Sex in the City too is so bad. Even you turned it off. Fantastic. We'll see oh, you it's later. so bad. Well, I can't even. I, I have that. an aunt, I have an aunt who I love dearly, but has terrible taste in movies. And who also believes that Joe Montana is the best quarterback in NFL history. Uh, <laughs> so, look, I, again, I love her dearly, but she's wrong about just about everything. All right, uh, like, that is an, even that is, she is not really big on sex in the city, too. That is the end of round three. Um, I mean, I would say so far all three rounds would go to Kanowski, but, you know, it, it's hard It's hard to say. Um at this point, what the judges are thinking. Let me throw it over to you, Rob. They're thinking um, 3027 Canelo. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> nobody nobody, let's just, let's nobody just sees it, Canelo wait, coming. Into a bigger house. Oh, wait, I said the loud part soft and the soft part loud. <laughs> so there we see a replay of that uppercut again that I was talking about. So, I mean, we're we're going into round four, and Ariel is still in the fight. I mean, he's staying in the pocket with Kanowski. They are definitely trading. I just think uh, Kanowski's edging him out a bit. And that gap is widening round by round. Uh, Kanowski's winning, winning each round by a wider margin than he did the previous one. Uh, this yeah, is not a very good trajectory for Ariola. Who right. also looks like he's about to throw up between rounds. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he looks really tired. That would make for some great television. It's happened before. Like, that would not be the first time. Uh-huh. All right, so Kanowski is now stalking Ariola. Ariola this time. Oh, Ooh, that was a nice overhand ride by Ariola. It was. That was. Kanowski was trying to find a spot, and he got caught. He just got caught uh, checking out Ariola. Uh-huh. Well, I mean, who among us hasn't? <laughs> if That's I might make a traditional too, word pun. Yeah, one punch can change anything in boxing, too. I mean, you can have a guy that you think is about to get knocked out. He comes up with a, you know, a punch from hell and just knocks the other guy out cold. Yeah, ask Marcus Brown. Deontay yeah. Wilder made a career out of it. Yeah. <laughs> Shote! Um... <laughs> How I felt was, so how, bad for poor Bobo Brazil. How was your podcast, Victor? I don't know. One guy kept yelling Jote, and they have a real thing with Jote Wilder. Anyway. Um... <laughs> God, Ariel is just so flat. I mean, again, neither guy has great footwork, but, man, he just gets backed straight into the ropes so consistently. So, Kanowski's not even really cutting him off. So I was concerned no, for Kanowski. not at all. I was concerned for Kanowski's wind at this point. Um, I wasn't quite sure if he was starting to get lethargic as the fight was going on. I mean, Ari we definitely talked about Ariola looking like he was sucking a bit of wind, but Kanowski didn't look that great in between rounds either in terms of that. But I'm, see I'm seeing he's keeping his defense up. He's not dropping his hands. So, uh, you know, maybe he's deceptively still, as far as conditioning goes, still in the fight. 
I mean, neither of these guys are, again, they're not really built for the full distance for, I mean, they're heavyweights. There's only a handful of heavyweights who actually are built to go, you know, 10 full rounds or whatever it happens to be, 10 or 12, depending on the circumstance. Yeah. Vladimir Klitschko made a career of it. Yeah, just being in significantly better condition and laughing at you as you tried to hit him and missed. <laughs> yes, that, that was a guy who was hard to hit in the heavyweight division. And <laughs> You know what I'm noticing that uh, Ariola is exploding on Canoxie is he's dropping his um, left hand a lot. And Ariola, even though he's coming, uh, you know, with those little short right hands, he's exploiting uh, that weakness there from Canoxie. There he goes again. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, I get... He's made he's made effective use of the the, uh, the straight right in this round. Yeah, this has been Ariola's best round so far. I still don't think he's winning it at the moment, but it's been his best. Glancing, he gl glancing hook there from Ariola would have been nasty if it actually hit the target. Go ahead, Victor. No, I just saw that left hook coming in from uh, Kanowski and uh, <laughs> came right across and uh, grazed Ariola's chin. If it would have caught him just on the button, man, that that could have been it. I'm just saying. <laughs> so that's why you heard me gasp a little bit, like. <gasps> <laughs> I'll tell you what, that, though. They, that this... body work from Kanowski is really starting to pile up. Yeah, it always does, and that's what that's one of the things that he's been really effective with. It's just you know just wearing the guy down to the point where sixth, seventh, eighth ground, the other guy is kind of they kind of lose because they're winded. They kind of start losing their will to continue um, with the whole brawling, and then he just takes advantage of you know them dropping their hands to protect the body so they can keep their breath in their body and just takes them out. But yeah, that that hand position for. Uh, Kanowski's left has been really low all fight, and Ariola has been keying in on it over the last couple of rounds. Mm -hmm. And I think he drops it because he's wanting to throw that. Um, you know, he wants to prepare for that left hook, but that's not. You know, that's not good. <laughs> good strategy. <laughs> all right, we move into round five of twelve of our heavyweight main event here on Fox. And they are head-to-head -head brawling in the center of the ring. Konowski not able to walk him back. In fact, quite the opposite. It looks like Ariel is starting to back him into the ropes. Yeah. And they are just trading punches. We've got what they used to call on Showtime an action fight. <laughs> well, uh, you know, a slow-motion action fight. <laughs> <laughs> it was not too bad. I mean, for the for, for uh, where these guys are at, um, I, I, I actually... Don't think it's been that bad. I thought it would, uh, especially from Ariola. I thought it'd be a lot slower. No, I, I, this has been entertaining. This is good television so far. Yeah, I, I think both guys are also tr they're trying to win a few fans over more generally as well as just win the fight. Like, hey, look, I exist and I'm exciting, and you should be interested in my fighting career. You know, I was talking to somebody about this earlier. Um, might have actually been on the podcast where. You know, you had the Mayweather-Pacquiao uh, fight, and you had casual viewers who watched that and just went, I don't understand what happened here. This is the most boring thing ever. And if you're, you know, if you're a boxing person, you know what you're looking for, you saw it, and it was great. But if you're the casual view and you're just wanting to see people hit each other in the head, it was mm -hmm. 12 rounds of what the fuck. Um, <laughs> Look, if you're the casual viewer just wanting to see that, you bought Mayweather-McGregor, and I can't, I can't help you <laughs> oh. as a human being at that point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what, what fun was had for a hundred bucks? Um, I was one of those guys that supported it. <laughs> oh, yeah, we all well, went look, to my buddy's house for that. <laughs> I watched it because I had to cover it. I had no interest in it outside of that. <laughs> yes, you covered it for the, for the MMA site, as I recall. Look, there's not a boxing section anymore, okay? I what do you want from me? <laughs> all right. the, yeah, that, that whole, that, yeah, that whole fight was a joke. <laughs> All right, we see uh, Konoski, as you said, you know, going for the body. I'm not sure Ariel how much is the body finding means. a lot. Ariel is finding much more success as this fight goes on. I'm a little surprised. Uh, somewhere in that last round or so, things kind of turned a corner for him. I mean, maybe he I got he's... like. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Oh no, no I'm just going to say maybe he got like uh, you know what's here about those uh, runners. Um... Uh, the second wind. The second wind, yeah. Maybe that he just caught his second wind at uh, runner's high. <laughs> Could be. 
Kanowski's looking a little dark around the eyes, I'm, and I don't think he can. He's taking a like lot that. of he's taking a lot of punches. I mean, yeah. not the hardest punches in the world, but he's taken a significant number of them to the face. Yeah, he just took a he just took a clean one right to the face. I mean, the guy's got a chin on him, no doubt about that. But he's definitely taking a lot of punishment. Um, he's not cut as such, but yeah, he, it looks like he's taken a number of hits to the face, clean hits to the face. So what do you think if he were to fight Wilder like that? Do you think he'd be able to take his punches, like his chin be strong enough no, to take them? Oh, no. Not if he took them like this. De look, yeah. Deontay Wilder, I don't consider Deontay Wilder a great boxer. His footwork's not great. His punches aren't great. But if I have to get someone who's going to punch, you know, a, an elk that's charging at me angrily, I want Deontay Wilder to punch it. Like, but he's got that kind of power. But we talked about this in the last Deontay Wilder fight. We've never seen somebody use less of his reach besides Stefan Struve. You know, he, he someone has to get into his training camp and be like, hey, you're like nine feet tall and your reach is about the size of a Boeing 747. Try using it once in a while. <laughs> he does have an impressive wingspan that, again, he just doesn't use. No, that's the thing. Like, he, he his thing is... He likes to, you know, he likes to land those one punch hooks to knock a guy out. And it's he, just the same reason he never throws more than two punches at a time, right? No, and you know, instead of uh, winning fights by, but you know, by getting behind his jab and looking for a place to land a straight or a hook with the right, he just wings these hooks that because you know because he's got a lot of power behind them. If they land, they kill you, but they got to land first. Well, I mean, he spent, you know, what, 12 rounds with Tyson Fury and managed to land all of two punches. <laughs> That's about right. <laughs> that might have been the fight I was referring to, as a matter of fact. All right, so we are back here in round six. We are halfway into this champ, uh, this main event fight here on Fox as I think both fighters are really starting to slow down. Now, this is one of the first clinches I've seen in the entire fight. Yeah, they're just doing a lot of, all right, we're going to lean on each other. We're still going to punch, but can you take a bit of my, well, let's just lean each other, on each other and we'll reduce some of the load on our bodies. Christ, we'll use turn, physics to our turn the lights off and throw blood on both of them. You've got the opening scene to Rocky. No. Except in the little war shape. <laughs> I was going to say, at least Sylvester Stallone got into something approximating 1970s fight shape. Yeah. <laughs> Ariola These guys are more like hockey fight shape. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of hockey fights, yeah, they're doing a lot. Uh, this, lands in, and this ends in a headbutt. I'm going to be very upset. Oh, um, uh, I would love that. Uh, at this point, Ariola's uh, eyes are starting to swell up a little bit in discolor. Uh, those shots from... Uh, Kanaski is starting to get through a little bit. So we're seeing a lot of arm punches, like not really. And like you said, you know, the, fo the footwork is just gone. Their their feet are there, just keeping them upright. But that's about it. So we're getting a lot of arm punches being thrown. Uh, not a tremendous amount of power I'm seeing from either guy, but they're but this is a war of attrition is what's happening. They're breaking each other down. And while I would not say that Ariola is winning on points. If this keeps going all 12 rounds, both of them are going to be pretty beat up by the end of this fight. Look, they're going to have to bust out the oxygen tank between rounds for these two guys <laughs> after another three rounds. <laughs> well, even... Um, not Ariel, I'm sorry. Even uh, Kanowski admitted that he kind of took it easy on his training camp for this particular fight, and he didn't really... Uh, stick to the nutrition plan that they had planned for him uh, for this fight and I mean it shows just like his belly button <laughs> <laughs> which you should which for the record you should never see in a boxing match you should never be able to your trunk should go over that if they yeah, don't the, these, two are to look like, the, these two are starting to look like me when I mow the lawn and I have to keep pulling up my shorts if I might quote the great Scott Steiner he's fat <laughs> That's a wrestling joke, everybody. Had to get it off the bingo card. <laughs> All right, and the hook ends that round from Kanowski. Yeah, it, Kanowski's still winning the rounds by and large, but uh, this is... This is probably one of those fights that's going to get a bit of a standing ovation and a lot of donks who just go, yeah, that was such great fun, and anyone with a functional brain or knowledge of the sport of boxing goes, yeesh. 
<laughs> uh, keep going for a sec, okay? I gotta walk away for a minute. All right. Well, so, it's going to be great have... for the highlight reels. <laughs> That's true. This will go. This will. Uh, they will be able to slot in some nice, uh, you know, clips of this fight to try and get you excited for one of these guys fighting again, whoever it happens to be. Mm-hmm. So, how do you have this scored through? I believe that was the sixth round that oh. just ended. Well, let me go back. Let me go to my scorecards here. I got, let's see. Kanowski, 10, 20, 20, 50. Races. Yeah, Kanowski. I got Kanowski on all the rounds. Um, winning here. Uh, so I got him at 10s all through the sixth round at 60 here. And me. Bust on my calculator here. Uh, 254. There we go. <laughs> All right, we are I back in I... round seven. Go ahead, Robert. I'm going to say, I think I gave Ariola one of them. So I would be, would that be 59, 57? 59, 56, one of those two. My math's a little bit off in space. <laughs> Hey man, I had to bust out that calculator. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even ashamed to say it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kanowski back to stalking Ariola and backing up into the ropes. And here's my problem though. Kanowski does that, and then Ariola at this point in the game, because Kanowski is so winded, is just kind of walking out out of the ropes. And Kanowski's like, "You may pass, sir." Yeah, he, he, again, he's not even trying to really take an angle after step and pivot. He's just walking. Kanowski's like, yeah, all right. I'll follow you over here now. Mm-hmm. Then I'll follow you over here. Then yeah. I'll follow you over here. Yeah, uh-huh. this is lesson one of ballroom dancing. You're gonna, your <laughs> your footsteps go where my footsteps have gone. So da, 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 da. <laughs> Don't step on my toes. <laughs> And we are very clearly doing not even the quick step. This is the Viennese waltz. Yeah. <laughs> Kanoski digging into the body again. Uh, on the hazard card, they gave round five uh, to Ariola. Otherwise, I think that's yes. the one. I, I think that's the one I gave him. Yeah. Otherwise, for all you math majors, it's fifty-nine oh, fifty-five. Well, oh, that's interesting. I, I thought, if any. Maybe the second round was for Ariola, but um, that's interesting. It was one of the more recent ones that I thought he had won. So, mm-hmm. five. Yeah, my see. math is so bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ar- oh, God. Ariola. Bust out those times tables chart. And welcome to the yeah. Radical Broadcasting Network. We ain't got time for math. <laughs> well, Mark is an avowed proponent of the burning of books as well, so we don't know quite what we offer here. <laughs> oh, man. I now, you, now I think... It's the first time we've met this guy. I told you, behave. Shut up. Um, anyway, you were saying, Victor. <laughs> no, man, I was, this that, was, uh, this is look... was starting to... Uh-huh. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh... Oh, no worries, man. That, that Kanowski was starting to kind of lean on Ariola, which is never a good sign, man. That means his tank is kind of depleting there. Uh, he should have stuck to that protein, man. That's what, that's what I said before. I said, you know, he with, with each round, he's slowing down more and more and not, you know, he, he came after Ariola early on with a lot of aggression. And now I feel like he's he's putting in the punches. He's digging into the body here and there, but I don't see a lot of fire here. I see a lot of, well, I've probably won most of the rounds, so as long as they don't get knocked out, I've won the fight. Next, please. I mean, look, I've seen more compelling versions of this fight all across the streets of New York when you get you know, the, the <laughs> Polish guy and the Mexican guy who just can't see eye to eye. I'm like, okay, we're going to throw down. <laughs> just a lot more exciting. <laughs> well, they tend to end faster. This is true. There's the... Uh, the there's, there's nobody contractually obligating them to stay for an hour. Exactly. <laughs> but you know what, though? The only thing with boxing, I mean, you still got to watch out for those judges because a lot of times, you know, people on fighters make the mistake of thinking, hey, I got this fight, and, you know, the the corner sometimes kind of, you know, sets up bad expectations in their minds, and they kind of start coasting towards the end of the rounds, and the other guy picks up, and all of a sudden – 
they lose the whole fight because they coasted towards the end. Um, so you gotta, you know, I'm not a fan of leaving fights to judges because you never know what they're thinking and and how they're really scoring it. You should never take if you have to take a round off to get your win back. You do what you need to do, but you should never take off more than a round, or you end up giving mm-hmm. the whole fight to Canelo. <laughs> even if you don't, I mean, even if you do genuinely win every round, you still give the fight to Canelo if you're not the next Mexican star that they feel comfortable. Have I ever told you giving... my, fa- my favorite promo is 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 the bit where Canelo was on the horse, and I think that was for the Mayweather fight. Oh, that was fantastic. I wish I wish they had not only had him on the horse, but had him like hog tying people and saving damsel in distress from train tracks. Look, Vladimir Putin, Vladimir Putin did it better. <laughs> this is true. Yeah, ah. and look, Mayweather would Mayweather might have actually gone along with being the mustache twirly villain who ties the girl to the train tracks, just because he'll do <laughs> he'll do anything to sell a fight. He, he just, would do. His suit would have been made of money, though, as well as was his top hat. Oh yes. <laughs> All right, back to the fight. Um, <laughs> I, I warned you we were a little jokey. Uh, no, hey, it. just give it, put it all out there. I'm, I can handle it. I can handle it, guys. <laughs> all right, we see oh, that more... left hook of Kanowski is starting to come back into being a thing instead of just a bunch of arm punches at close distance. He, he's clipped uh, Ariola in the face with it a couple of times. It was a pretty I've decent them, one too. I've there. seen them clinch more this round than I haven't seen the whole fight, though, which worries me. Yeah, you, you, we've reached the point now where you're going to get a good minute and a half or so of them actually moving and doing stuff before their legs go away and they start hugging again. Yep. But that's the thing, though. I think this could swing Ariola's way even towards finishing the fight if this starts to go the way of some dirty boxing, a lot of you know punching mm-hmm. in the clinch. If he starts to take away his body and his legs in the clinch, Konoski's going to have a hell of a time. I mean, in fairness, he has body to lose, so... This is true. You're welcome to take it. <laughs> God, what? what? <laughs> Kanoski just did a thing where I thought he was where, where I thought he was more flexing muscle than he was punt throwing a punch. <laughs> it was the it was the slowest uppercut I've ever seen. That was not the slowest uppercut you've ever seen. It's just a very markedly slow uppercut. Which one will be the the slowest one? One that actually landed and won a fight, but was still pretty slow. Uh, this is in the way back machine for MMA fans, but uh, the uppercut Jeremy Stevens used to knock out Rafael dos Anjos was oh, horribly, yeah. te- horribly telegraphed, but it worked. Yeah, <laughs> it was. Uh, I, I think that could be along the same lines of as uh, Anderson uh, Silva's karate kick. So, Victor, you're into MMA as well. You still watch it? Oh yeah. I missed. Uh, I was kind of. I was kind of uh, disappointed though that I missed the uh, Lawler fight though because I'm a. I'm a Lawler fan, and you know he's then, down then to the don't floor. Watch and... it. Oh really? <laughs> I mean this in all sincerity. If you're a fan of Robbie Lawler, that fight will just frustrate you. Yeah, the two best parts of that fight were Colby Covington walking out to Kurt Angle's music and the crowd chanting back, "You suck." <laughs> True, <laughs> and the oh, second part was man, watching him. No ta- way. Was watching him tackle Robbie Lola like they were doing football drills. Yeah, uh, was he taking him down the whole fight? He won. Colby won that fight. Oh, yeah. um, uh, like fifty to forty-five. Fifty. There was one fifty forty-four, which I didn't agree with. I don't know which round would have been ten eight under the old rule set, which is what New Jersey uses. Uh, he didn't take him down the whole fight. He took him down for the first couple of rounds, and then Lawler just. I don't know, man. Lawler's legs were just not under him that fight. Uh, he got outboxed for a couple of rounds in close proximity. So, again, I mean, if you're a big no, fan... It was no Max Holloway, Frankie Edgar, where, Jesus Christ, everything Frank, how Max Holloway threw went... Got, got, everything he threw got, in, got uh, through Frankie Edgar's defenses. It was, like, phenomenal to watch. But, in fair... Again... Uh, Colby Covington did land a did a I believe attempt a record high number of strikes for a UFC fight. He attempted 533 strikes over the course of that fight. Wow, which is an absurd pace, especially for a guy weighing uh, come fight time probably around 200 pounds. Oh yeah, easy. Well, all right. So I'll, I'll maybe I don't know, man. I mean, I 
I'm not I mean, still uh, watching it, but I, I'm, I'll, I'll just, go in I'm with just warning you. If you're going in for just, just being a big Robbie Lawler fan, you might be deeply frustrated. Um, but there's some decent stuff to watch. All right, speaking of deeply frustrated, here we are in round yep. nine of 12. <laughs> and Kanofsky has decided to wake up. The prince has kissed him. He's come alive. He, he, the last three rounds that he kind of took off are now paying off, and he's ready to fight again. Yeah, he is now throwing yeah. with some with some authority. He landed a few there right on Ariola's chin, and Ariola shook him off, but he wasn't thrilled about it. Uh, yeah, Ariola's doing a lot more backing up now, and not backing up to try and walk him onto something, or just backing up away from pressure a little bit more. Like, oh boy, I don't like this anymore. Oh, there's a, there's a bear coming at him, throwing you know just <laughs> throwing paws at him. This would be you more know, interesting one... if one of them were a bear. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Kanowski kind of looks like. Like he, he could be one. No, He's not hairy possible. enough. Ah, uh, that's true. Yeah. Okay. I misspoke. I apologize. <laughs> I mean, I can't speak for his, you know, his personal life, where he might assume that role in some capacity. But uh, that would have been as great. Way, that would have been a great way to sell this: Ariola versus Fuzzy Wuzzy. <laughs> you know, the one thing that frustrates me when I uh, watch a boxing match is, you know, talking about Ariola moving backwards, is. Um, you know, when I was uh, doing some training in boxing, my coach was really adamant that when I go back, I, you know, keep my jab going as I'm moving backwards, especially if the guy's kind of, you know, charging after you. Um, so when I see boxers start going back and not just, you know, not throwing anything, just going back when the guy's moving forward and attacking, it's just, uh, I get so frustrated. I'm so like, you're Ari- a professional, come on. So Ariel just got his bell rung. Uh, uh, Kanowski laid in a hook. He he shook it off, but he kind of did that kind of a thing. Uh, and Kanowski continued to pressure the attack. He's still on his feet, but uh, I don't, I Ariola don't went lo- a little bit. He went a little bit wobbly there too. He didn't yeah. just do the get my head back, but his yeah, he dad, had to he, do the running man to get my legs back under me. But Dad turned off some of the lights in the house. They're not all on at this point. Yeah. yeah. Did you see what just happened with uh, Kanowski? He was, uh, I think, he was looking out at the uh, at the time, and he got clocked. Yeah, uh, Ariola has found a few moments of success here. Yeah, you really got to be mindful of what you're watching. So, mm-hmm. just as an aesthetic thing, as a television thing, Kanowski should stop look like he's in there at gunpoint. I mean, I could make a joke about him. Be- I could make a joke about him being Polish, as far as that goes, but. No, 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 no. Stop that. Um, 